Most of us never have an honest to goodness conversation with our spouses, one in which they feel like they can be completely honest with us without it affecting our inner self, our self-esteem, our self-worth, our happiness, and potentially send us completely down a, um, a rabbit hole of negative thoughts. These kinds of conversations are so important to have, not because they need to let us have it and you know not hold anything back, but because we need to be able to have conversations with our spouses about our marriage, about our children, about our homeschooling, and then about our finances that are not going to drive us apart and disconnect us. We need to be able to have these conversations with our spouses in a way that is building us back together, um, connecting us and rooting us in our marriage, in the sacrament of our marriage, in our relationship with God, and that is going to help move our family forward. So my husband and I have learned how to do this over the years, and we're of course not perfect at it, but we wanted to have a conversation together that we could share with you where we talk about our marriage and our parenting and our homeschooling and our finances in a way that helps you to see what it could look like while, like what it might look for, like for you now where maybe you're not managing your mind and maybe you're having some of the, the emotional turmoil that I was experiencing and that my husband bluntly but lovingly shares in this interview um, and then what it could possibly look like for you in the future if you start implementing the tools um, and really building up the skills to becoming more peaceful and confident mother, wife, and homeschooler. Um, in this conversation that we wanted to share with you, we, you know, I allowed him to be just completely open and honest, um, which is really what is going to help, you know, build us forward in the future, build up our family and help us to move toward that ultimate goal of sanctity. And we're going to do that together, but we're not going to do that in a way that is, you know, one of us rushing forward and leaving the other one behind. As we move forward, we're going to work step by step by step together, hand in hand, and we're going to be, you know, really lifting each other up um, in a way that is honest, that is not going to be holding the other back or leaving the other one behind. And as he explains in this interview with me, my husband really started learning how to use these tools when I started learning how to use them. And to him, they just made so much sense, like to his male brain, it's their very logical um, tools and skills. And so when I started learning them, he finally felt like he had a language to speak to me through that was just so clear and simple and logical for him. And so he was so much more on board with me doing this work because he was able to do it along with me. So again, we are, we're both walking hand in hand um, toward this common goal of heaven, but now we have a common language that we can speak. And so I can, you know, think a little bit more, a little bit like he does and that he is able to see where I'm coming from a little bit easier because we have this common language now um, using these life coaching tools that you know, we're able to work on together um, just because I decided to go ahead and say yes to doing this work. And in this interview, he does speak to the husbands about you know getting involved and getting to work as well because it really does just move your marriage forward together toward that common goal of heaven, which then makes the this this thing that we're doing in life, this marriage, this family, and homeschooling, it just makes it so much more simple. And it feels so much better to do this along with our spouse. Um, we are doing that in a way that, again, is just building up our relationship and building up our domestic church here in our home. And this is so important for homeschoolers to be able to have these kinds of conversations as well, because our family are really, this is our primary vocation. This is what we are doing. We are not being called to everything outside of the home. We are really being called to focus solely here in our home and in our marriage. And so building up that conversation, um, building up that honesty and openness in the marriage is going to help propel the rest of the family forward. So my husband and I wanted to do this interview together and to share what it's been like for us in our marriage um, from the beginning when things were really, really hard. And he shares, again, very openly and honestly about that. And, um, and then what has it been looking like ever since? So without further ado, I wanted to introduce you to my amazing husband, Lucas Brown. He is an English professor at our community college. We've been married for 16 plus years, have seven gorgeous children. And at the time of this recording, they are 15 years old, all the way down to almost four. And we homeschool all seven of them full time. Two of them are high schoolers. So 
Again, without further ado, here's my incredible husband, Lucas Brown. I hope you enjoy this interview with a homeschool husband. Hi, honey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Um, okay, so we're just going to dive right in. Um, one of the first questions that I want to ask you is, um, what is the difference from your perspective, being my husband, being the dad to our kids, and, um, you know, the, the homeschool dad, the homeschool husband, I guess. Um, you know, what's been the difference or the biggest change that you've noticed in me, your wife, <laughs> uh, the mother of your children from before I experienced coaching to after I experienced coaching or now, um, yeah, what's been the biggest difference for you between then and now? So I would say peace. <laughs> um, I did not coach you to say that. No. <laughs> uh, like the house is more peaceful. I found, um, there were times in the past where there would be more blow ups or more anxiety. I know I felt more anxiety. Like, what am I coming home to today? Mm -hmm. Especially if I would get some of those text messages throughout the day that were like, these kids are driving me crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually used to check our photos account and see like how many pictures you were taking because that was like a, a metric I would use to determine how your mood was that day like mm -hmm. if you're taking more pictures then you're happier and if there aren't any pictures then I'm like stealing myself mm -hmm. when I get home because I'm sure that I will find <laughs> a house in disarray and that's just not really the case anymore I, I kind of know what to expect when I'm getting home most days and there's still a bad day here and there but uh, I still I know when I come home I'm gonna see Emily's smiling face and you're gonna come over while I cook and hang out and just a, a lot more of a peaceful place. So. Okay. Um, and, you know, Luke and I have talked a lot about all this, so it's not a surprise to me when he says these things to me. Um, but, you know, before when I would have heard something like that, I would have been just, you know, wrecked by that information. I would have been, um, yeah, I would have hurt my feelings a lot. And now I can hear that feedback and um, just receive that knowing that it's coming from a lot of love and concern but not because you think I'm doing something wrong, right? Um, so can you talk a little bit more about maybe how you, from your perspective, how I've changed with my moods or maybe those bad days, you know, that we still have every once in a while because we're human and things happen, right? We have crummy days from time to time. So from your perspective, you know, how do I handle those kinds of days now? Yeah, and it's interesting because this is something I'm still kind of adjusting to uh, because there was a time in our marriage where something would go wrong enough to make you upset mm -hmm. and that was the day the day was gone like mm -hmm. at that point like I knew that I would have to spend the rest of the day kind of trying to make you feel better and even with that it might not end up working and we would probably have to sleep and wake up another day and do it again uh, and I still kind of catch myself in that mood like that mindset sometimes where like oh Emily got upset and now like the whole day is wrecked but it's not really that way anymore. Like you're much quicker to kind of, I guess, recover, if that's the right word, sure. when, you know, something does happen that's upsetting or something like that. You know, you might take a few minutes or some time to yourself and kind of, you know, gather yourself, but then we can continue with our regular lives and you're still there and present and um, more joyful than, like, you know, the whole day isn't just kind of ruined that way. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that's good for me to hear that feedback because that's how I experience it. But a lot of the times, especially in marriage, you just know somebody so well that um, there's a lot of assumptions being made. And so I think it takes time for both of us to adjust. Um, and I remember that was a question you asked me kind of earlier on in my coaching career was, are husbands having a hard time adjusting to their wives making these huge transformations because it really does change the dynamic in the marriage as well? Um I think it keeps you on your toes a little bit more because you're still kind of adjusting to what the new expectation is around the house. And I'm no longer expecting you to provide my happiness for me, which is something that I probably never, ever would have thought was a thing, <laughs> was even possible um, before, you know, I started implementing the coaching tools that I learned and then I'm practicing them every single day. Um, so that's good feedback for me to hear as well. 
All right, so a couple of years after we brought our kids home um, from school and started homeschooling full time, and our seventh child was maybe a year old, two years old maybe, um, I sought counseling and some therapy for just some unprocessed you know, trauma, kind of PTSD sort of things from when my first husband died in a car accident um, many, many years earlier. And um, there was so much goodness that came from all of that, but there was still something missing for me. Um, like I would, the counseling and the therapy helped me get through the trauma part of it and help me process that. But there was still, um, you know, I was still feeling really stuck. Like it would only last, the, the feeling better would only last for a little while. Um, and I just kind of felt stuck still. So I was wondering if you could talk to, um, speak a little bit about that, that time when I was doing counseling and therapy and what changed from, you know, before I went to counseling and therapy, cause I was having a lot of anxiety. Um, we even got a dog <laughs> to help with my anxiety. <laughs> um, and you know, put our family through the whole puppy phase and having a new baby at the same time. Um, but then, you know, then I, then I went through counseling and I experienced that healing. Um, and then there was a third phase where I felt like something else was missing. And I was just wondering if you could, um, and that's what led to coaching. So I was wondering if you could just talk to that, speak to that from your perspective. Yeah. I think we were both hoping that counseling would like be the whole answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And with all of this stuff, I am always somewhat impatient with it. Like, why aren't we better now yet? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we would see that with counseling, especially where it was like the, the day after, like you're trying new things and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to move forward and things seem like they're looking up but then it definitely always felt like you had to go back the next week uh, to get the next dose of that or whatever. Um, and so with coaching, that was kind of a, a newer idea for us that actually your counselor like brought up coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was easy to see that as like, oh, here's another thing to try that is going to be medium successful and so I know that's why I was hesitant at first to kind of take that on was because we were already doing something and maybe wasn't giving completely the results that we had hoped it was going to give. And so, you know, it was hard to kind of just say like, well, let's do this other new thing that also might not work. Um, and by the way, your health insurance doesn't pay for it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, I think we could both see that you were making progress, but that you needed something a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Could you, from your perspective, like what was missing? Um, just that, that stability, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the levelness that you have now um, was still like there would be days when, during counseling where, you know, you would still lose it. And, uh, you know, you would never really know when those were. And so I, I think that's probably like what we would really like from getting from, you know, like, a, like certainly it became more consistent, but there were definitely still a lot of up and down days. And I think that was what coaching really kind of, you know, got you to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see how um, like looking back and, you know, looking through the past, being able to see with counseling, you know, I was able to come out of the dark hole that I was in. It felt like I was just always scrambling up the side of, a, you know, like a deep well. And then I would be doing okay and I'd be climbing, but then something would happen and I would slip and fall back down. And it just felt like I had fallen even farther than where I had started. And it just felt so dark. And so with coaching, you know, being able to have these tools to manage my mind and be able to like experience my feelings without them feeling like I was falling down into this deep, deep well over and over, um, has been completely life changing. Like that these, these feelings that I'm having, um, that they're not bad. They don't have to wreck our whole day. You know, it's no one else's, you know, fault. Uh, I take ownership for them and I, I have the tools and the skills to be able to do that now. Um, and, you know, I am able to share those with you and I'm able to share those with our kids. So even, you know, could you talk about that too? Just how maybe you've been changing your own mindset, um, you know, having been married to a coach now for <laughs> well over a year. Yeah, I think uh, exposure to a coach is always a positive thing. Um, 
you know, sometimes when we're on dates or something like that, we'll talk about a problem I'm having at work or something like that. And I, because you've taught me the model, I can kind of tell when you're going to coach me a little bit and I'm okay with that. Um, but it's really nice to have that perspective of you, like you being able to kind of ask me those questions and help me to see the situation in a way that I wasn't seeing it, um, but is still very true um, or maybe in a truer way. And then having that perspective helps me a lot uh, when like kind of figuring out what I really want or what I really want to do or what I'm willing to do. Um, and I think we see the same kind of thing with the kids where mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for a kid at kind of like beginning a meltdown, you know, to say, you know, like to stop them before they get too far into that spiral and say like what's really causing this feeling and they've learned enough now to know that it's a thought that is causing that and then they can kind of stop melting down sometimes uh and start being scientists for themselves and trying to figure out okay i'm having this thought where did that thought come from mm -hmm. yeah my favorite thing is to have to ask myself and then to, you know when the kids are going through this as well as like what's your feeling like name the feeling that you're having right now and they can tell me i'm you know i'm feeling really upset right now Okay, and then I could ask them, why are you feeling upset? And then they can tell me all the reasons they think they're feeling upset. And then we can go through some really good questions to be able to really uncover if that's true or not. And a lot of the times it's it's not. A lot of the times it's just our human brains being assuming and assuming the worst. Um, and so really rewiring that for ourselves. And it's a lot of fun to be able to do that with my family and uh, to see that progress, especially in some of our kids that have a major history of major meltdowns um, and, you know, them being some of the most articulate when it comes to their emotions now mm -hmm. as bigger kids. Um, and just the other day, our youngest, who's going to be four in a couple of weeks at the time of this recording, and um, I said, you know, just a couple of days ago, I said, oh, I'm so sorry, you're having such a tough day. And he said, I'm not having a tough day. I'm having a sad day. <laughs> and you know, I, was able, I was so excited that he was able to articulate that at such a little age. Um, and he's still, you know, he, of course, that's as far as we can get with him. But at least he's able to name that. And that helps him calm down so much faster um, just to be able to put that language to his big feelings um, and to feel heard and understood. So I think that's what we all want is that toddler in our brains to feel heard and understood. Um, so I, I, for me, from my perspective, um, I think I'm biased, so I would love your perspective on this, but I see it benefiting our entire family to not just have a coach in the family, but I think having a mom who's managing her mind, a Absolutely. mom who is a wife who is, um, you know, not blaming everyone around her for her thoughts and her feelings, um, not blaming everybody around her for, you know, all the things coming up within her, you know, um, and like just last night, for example, you know, I came home from running errands and the house was a disaster and, you know, I'm really tempted to get upset about that. I'm really tempted to be like hurt by that. And moms, I think we all have this story that, oh, they don't love us, you know, or they don't care about us if, you know, things aren't done for us the way we want to, we want them done. Um, because that's some, one of our love languages, but, um, but when we really start to take ownership of them, then I can decide to clean for myself, right? It doesn't have to be an angry cleaning. <laughs> it can be, I'm just going to walk around the house. I'm going to pick up the things that, you know, I see that I would like to put away and just have that visual piece for myself. That's just such a gift that I can give to myself now. And then I can sit down and just enjoy the rest of our evening together. And it doesn't have to spiral into this bad mood. Um, and so that is a, a much more frequent occurrence now, I would say. Um, so yeah, from, from your perspective, just having um, a wife in the family, um, mom to your children, you know, who's in charge of her own thoughts and feelings, like for you, what's the difference there? Um, the big lead up to that question. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, you know, very early in our marriage, there was, uh, you know, um, we, we would work on some of these things without these tools, right? Like we would, you know, because I've always, from whatever reason, had a similar mindset to the model. And one of the reasons the model was an e easier sell for me once I kind of learned what it was, mm -hmm. um, because I've kind of 
grew up knowing like yeah your thoughts impact how you feel and you don't have to think those thoughts you can choose new thoughts and like move on and that's okay and that used to drive me bananas yeah and so early in marriage we, <laughs> we would talk about that and I'm, you would be like super sad and upset and i would be like well you don't have to like dwell on this like we can move forward and my brain was like no this is inherently painful this yeah. you don't understand this is this is such a hard horrible thing and he's like no it's it's <laughs> gonna be fine it's, yeah it's, a, it's <laughs> currently currently we're doing this and we, you know soon we won't be and like we can mm -hmm. just think about that and yeah so it was um hard early in our marriage because we would yes. go back and forth about that and i i would not understand very well like what the hang up was, like why, what was stopping you. And I understand that better now, I think actually after coaching um, than I did in the past. And certainly it's gotten so much better where you have been able to just kind of um, like be able to move forward with things in a, in a way. And so obviously that's created a tremendous amount of peace in the house and peace between us. Um, and uh, yeah, we're still getting used to it, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. I just, I couldn't figure out how you couldn't see how this was, whatever the thing was, you know, was just so painful. Like you, you could just not see my point of view and I just could not see your point of view. And so we were just butt heads over this all the time. And you were, you know, you've always been the more optimistic one and the more peaceful peacemaker in the family. And so a lot of the times you would back down, like you would just kind of give me my space or my way or whatever. And that would, you know, irritate me too. <laughs> like there was <laughs> no winning for you, poor guy. Um, you know, and, and so I have so much, uh, love and empathy for you for, and, and just, uh, compassion for everything that you went through, um, for 15, you know, 14, 15 years until I finally was able to catch up, but praise be to God for his president providence and, um, just presence in our marriage being that glue that held us together through all of that. Um, you know, cause we would try new things to, to feel better. We would, you know, buy new furniture. We would, um, you know, when we, we brought all the kids home, you know, to homeschool, um, because we had, you know, all this desire, this deep calling to do so. And, um, you know, after public school and private school and all of that, we tried new curriculum. We tried, um, we moved houses. I mean, those were, these were all big things that happened over time, homeschooling and moving and, and all of that. But, um, I know like from my perspective, whenever something doesn't feel good, I want to change something. Whenever I am having a hard day, I feel like something needs to change. We need to move again. We need to, you know, uproot our whole lives and try something new. Um, you know, or I would, you know, secretly eat a lot of food and I felt terrible and just had a poor self-image. So um, I think, you know, a question that could, you know, come from all of that uh, intersection right there might be, you know, from your perspective being my husband, um, you know, how has my self-image changed since I've learned these coaching tools and how has your, you know, image of me changed, I guess? I don't know that my image of you has changed. I don't know. I've always thought you were beautiful and perfect and awesome. <laughs> I did not tell him to say <laughs> But, uh, you know, in your own self-image, you know, I can, you know, we've, we've gone through ups and downs with weight loss and things like that. And um, at times it's been a real struggle, uh, you know, like kind of white knuckling it through weight loss. Um, especially the first time you really lost all that weight. Uh, you know, that was just like kind of an, a, an act of the force of will to like, you know, deprive yourself of the things you wanted so that you would lose weight. And mm -hmm. it was admirable and impressive. <laughs> um, but certainly since coaching and kind of learning some of those tools, like especially managing urges and things like that, it's be seemed like it's become a lot more effortless for mm -hmm. you to just say, no, I'm not going to eat the rest of this plate. Like I'm going to be done right now. Or like, yeah, I'll have that bowl of ice cream and it's going to be fine. And, you know, like not kind of being so uptight and structured about it and being able to just kind of be a lot more relaxed and understand like my, my weight might go up five pounds or down five pounds and that's okay because I know it like this is how I eat now and this is my my own body size and shape and mm -hmm. so yeah that's been I, I, very clearly a positive mm -hmm. no I totally agree and you know just from being in the body that you know I would look in the mirror and I didn't recognize myself for so long because I was 70 pounds overweight 
and had had sev- seven children, you know, like my body did amazing things. And so, but my self image was, I would look in the mirror and that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. And so between feeling like I'm not me in my brain and in my body, you know, in my heart, and then I look in the mirror and that's not me either. It's such a scary place to be. Like that's such a scary place to be in all the time, um, a scary mindset to, to be in all the time. And so, you know, where I am now does feel more peaceful. It does feel like I just am comfortable with me. And I'm so rooted in the certainty and confidence that I'm exactly where I need to be. And everything that we've gone through has been for a reason. And it's helped prepare us for this moment in this time in our marriage and doing this work and raising these children and preparing them for the work that they have in store to do someday. So being able to, you know, really reshape all of the pain and even the trauma that has come throughout of our throughout our lives, um, it's all led to this moment. And we just know that what we're doing right here and right now is going to propel us into the future and it's going to help guide our children into the futures that God has planned for them someday. Um, so, you know, for me doing this work and, um, it took a huge investment for our family. It took a huge investment of time and finances. And, um, at first, like when I first heard the, these tools and was getting uh, introduced to them, I just knew that this is what I needed in my life. I'm like, this, this is exactly what I've been missing. This is the the missing piece to the puzzle is going to help me know more about me, why I do what I do. Um, but, you know, for you, I, that was a harder sell, you know, being the the financial, you know, protector of our family, um, protector of our family in every sense of the word, but especially financial. Um, like how, how were, how did you come to the decision that this was an investment worth making for us? So, I mean, in a certain way, I, I kind of can know when you really are serious about something and trying something because you don't let it go. <laughs> um, you know, like sometimes like we'll bring some, something up and it'll be like, oh yeah, that, that would be fun or interesting or cool. And then, you know, I don't really hear about it again. And so I know like it was something that's passing. Um, and coaching, I thought was going to be something like that because you did bring up coaching and then we kind of like moved on mm-hmm. from it. Uh, and then I think maybe like six months later, we were kind of back to the subject again and you seemed a lot more serious about it. Uh, and I think a couple of things really helped with that is I got to see some of the stuff like be, kind of behind the scenes. Uh, and I was like, I thought to myself like, okay, well actually that's like it's some, some pretty good logic in that. And that, like seeing the model being used helped me to kind of like see the value of it. Um, especially that you were responding to it because it was like, again, like it felt like things that we had talked about many times before that I've said, but like didn't, you didn't really come around on. Um, and so I, I liked that. And and then, you know, I, yeah, as far as the, the investment, um, ultimately I would, I always love to make you happy and get you the things you want and things like that. And so um, it's, it's really a matter of, how badly do you want it? And is it going to help our family? And I wasn't sure about the second part, but you thought it would, and I trust you. And so when, you know, it came time to make that investment, then it was kind of a matter of trust between us. Um, And I trusted you that you wouldn't like, you know, you wouldn't understand the value of money. You understand the investment that you're making. Um, And it was very clear to me that, you were committed to it. Um, and that was kind of our last conversation before we invested in coaching was like, this is something we're going to do. We're going to do it like all the way and we're not going to stop in the middle uh, because that's something we've done in the past uh, mm-hmm. with various things, um, both of us. And so I just, you know, we both kind of wanted to make sure like we're going to take this, this money that we had, you know, through God's will and we're going to invest it in this thing. We're not going to stop. We're not going to like do it halfway. Uh, and once I saw that commitment, um, then that kind of was the thing I really needed to see from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I hundred percent agree. And I was, you know, this was so, so interesting because I, when it's something that I 
have a feeling about, like I think it's going to work. I know that if I bring it up too much and you're not certain about it yet, because I'm not certain about it yet, then it won't happen. And so what I have this habit of doing, um, and I have found this to be true for all women, <laughs> is um, or most women anyway, is that we find something we want and we think about it out loud with our husbands. And the husband's like, I don't know, that seems like a lot or, you know, has some hesitation. And so we go and we implement it quietly. Like we go and we start implementing it in our life and just seeing if it works. Because if we say it out loud too much and we don't follow through with it, then it feels really crushing and we let ourselves down too much because other people are involved at that point. And so if we just do it quietly and, you know, follow through with ourselves, you know, in this um, low risk way, then once we have, you know, the the data, once we have the evidence, right, that it works, then we can come to our husbands and say, this, these are the changes I'm seeing. This is what's working for me. I want to go farther. I want to do more. Um, and so I think that that's where my level of confidence came in asking for this big thing for myself was because I was already seeing the benefit and the changes and feeling the that transformation within me and within our relationships even though no one else knew that that's what I was doing. Um, so that's how I knew it was going to work. And I was already experiencing these, you know, fruits of the Holy Spirit where I was being more kind and more gentle with myself and with others. But I knew that I was only having this like rudimentary understanding of the tools and of the concepts. And I wanted to go farther. I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to really understand myself. I wanted to understand what it meant when I heard these coaches talking about experiencing your feelings and not, you know, and feeling them deeply instead of just um, reacting to them, right, or avoiding them or, you know, all of these ideas that sounded so good, but I just had no clue what that meant. Um, so I wanted to go and do more. And that's something that I love about coaching is it, it allows you to dream. It allows you to, um, to really get to know who you are and what it is that you want and to set goals and then to go after them and to have that support along the way. So, you know, we've been doing that as a married couple now for a long time. We've always been in a level of service in, in the church in one form or another or many forms all at the same time. And so this is how our family is serving right now. Um, but, you know, I want to bring it back to um, a homeschool uh, conversation as well because this is, you know, homeschool episode here talking about homeschool moms and the Catholic faith. And so, um, you know, as far as our homeschool journey has gone, we have really been open to God's will in our life. We have been like our whole marriage has come down to uniting our will with, with God's for our family, which is why doing this mindset work is so powerful. And it's just so darn Catholic <laughs> um, is really being present here in this moment, which is truly the only place to find God. Um, which allows us to be fully present with each other and our children as well. So as homeschoolers now, um, using these these mindset tools and applying them in our lives, can you just talk a little bit about what it was like, um, you know, to experience either me as the homeschool mom or us as homeschoolers at home, you know, when you would come home during the day and what our family was like after a day of homeschooling compared to now when you come home and it's been a day of homeschooling? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, so, you know, even just since my mind is still kind of on the financial piece, like curriculum, um, like we used to try a different curriculum every quarter, sometimes like every six weeks uh, because something went wrong, something wasn't working. And so we would just go and like we would buy the next thing. And that really added up. And I think this like, whole semester we're still on the same curriculum that we started with so it's like a major uh change for us mm -hmm. um but also you know I think um the kind of the freedom of the day which was something we always desired with homeschooling uh we, you know we always wanted that like we you know everyone maybe has this image of like the perfect homeschool day where you kind of like the kids move through their you know subjects and you know like snacks happen when snacks happen and meals happen and they joke with each other and sometimes they're snuggling and sometimes they're far away and you know like there's just kind of that uh that idyllic sort of peaceful day 
I hadn't really seen that once we like first started homeschooling and actually for a few years um, because like there was a kind of a, a very schedule driven thing where you would do like first thing of the day and then next thing of the day and then next thing and next thing. And so the kids kind of, you know, it was almost like bringing school home rather than homeschooling. Um, and really like just in the last couple of years, we've really started being able to transition successfully to kind of that more, uh, I guess, gentler pace of homeschooling. And the kids are still learning a ton and still getting the things done that they need to get done. Um, but it just feels so much different, uh, mm -hmm. so much calmer. Uh, and it really is like that, you know, the dream of homeschooling that we had when we came home. It's a lot closer to that uh, than it was in the past because, um, yeah, I think, you know, it, you we were able to let go a little bit of the control of it uh, and kind of allow the kids to like be curious and to follow their passions and things like that. And a lot of that starts with ourselves and our own anxieties and fears and being able to let go of that. Yeah. And so for your from your perspective, when we were first homeschooling, you know, you're an educator. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he teaches um, English at, in his professor of English in our community college. And, you know, so I think you maybe had a, an expectation of what education needed to look like at home um, or just education in general, maybe needed to look like for the kids. And um, all I have ever known has been the, the public school or uh, private school system. And so you know, my instinct was to just replicate all of that at home. And so, you know, when we started to relax a little bit more um, and really follow the kids' curiosities a little bit more and allow them to pick maybe more of their subjects and their learning styles and all of that, um, like what was your thought process um, from an educator standpoint and from the dad? You know, like I hear a lot of dads and husbands who really worry that the kids are falling behind really worry that they're not doing enough, that they're not going to be able to succeed and have the life that they want. And I know that that mindset plays a lot, a big role into the the mom and the, home, the homeschool mom's point of view as well. She worries about all of that um, and worries about it even more if it's being echoed from her husband. So did you have those concerns um, as we were going through it? I mean, I think rigor is always a concern with homeschoolers. Like, it's something we kind of always have in the back of our mind. Like, are they doing enough? Are they falling behind, right? Like, that fear. Um, I come at it from kind of a different sort of direction, I think, because of, like, my own school, public school, I never liked. Um, my favorite year in public school was when I got to design my own curriculum and I feel like I learned more that year than any other year. I went to a very small school and, uh, just, um, they didn't have really the, the things I needed there. And so luckily my parents were able to kind of like leverage me a year where I could do my own thing. Um, and so I think that's kind of where I came from like it's a homeschooling. And so as, as we picked out our first curricula and stuff like that, I, I was looking for things that would push them without being so formalized and so workbooky and things like that. But we also only had to draw from the things that we had done in the past. And so, you know, sax and math was where we went because that's what I had in school and you were fairly ambivalent about math. <laughs> Um, but I don't know that I've never come like come home and said like, did they learn enough today or anything like that? Like that's never really been a fear for me. And um, actually heard a Tolstoy quote recently where you know he was talking about like children like want to learn and love to learn and really like it's just us that get in the way of that more than anything, um, which sounds really unschooly and I know we're like creeping up to that line, but uh, I, I really think that's true. Like children have this inherent curiosity mm -hmm. and I think I've kind of always thought that one of school, like, you know, brick and mortar school's job is to kind of like drive that out of children in a certain way. So, mm -hmm. Well, I would say that the more we have been schooling, the more unschooly we tend to look <laughs> and feel. And I think that that's, you know, there's some beauty in that, you know, because we are very, you know, interest driven with the kids. And I think we found a really happy medium for that, for this point in our lives, like for this season. And I think that's a really beautiful thing about these mindset tools and coaching is that we get to really decide what it is that's right for our children because we're the experts in these children. 
and we know exactly where they are. We're not confused. We're not surprised if a kid is, you know, behind or in something like we know exactly where they are. And so we can, um, you know, decide that a curriculum isn't working, which is what we did with math for um, at, a, at a point. And if, you know, that math would be better suited for a kid later later down the road, we'd bring it back in, right? We we have no preconceived notions. As an example of that, be. right? Like one of our kids reads all the time, doesn't spell, mm-hmm. takes the ISAT or LSAT or whatever. IRI. It, IRI. And what do you know? Like reading, overall reading is off the charts and spelling is all the way bottom. And so like, you know, like, let's keep an eye on this student is like the official recommendation. Right. And we're not worried at all. Like we know like spelling will come around um, and you know, certainly gives us something to, to watch, but yeah, like we weren't surprised by that. And, and we were also okay with that because we know how we're moving forward in their education. We don't need to worry about like, are they meeting this guideline by this day? Mm-hmm. Like that's not really like every every single kid meets different milestones at different times and that's mm-hmm. true from when they're little babies all the way through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've seen, you know, we've been homeschooling long enough and with have have such a wide variety of age ages of um age ranges of our children that now we can see, you know, children who are a little bit older um, you know, last year our oldest said, "Mom, I don't like my handwriting. Can you get me a handwriting curriculum? I want to I want to be better at my handwriting." And I said, "Sure." So I got one for him and you know, he improved a little bit and then, you know, was pretty good with where he ended up. And so now he's just, you know, happy to be where he's at. Um, you know, my daughter, who's a few years younger, um, our daughter, a few years younger than that, really wanted to learn cursive. So I thought, okay, let's do that. And, you know, it was kind of, kind of that unschooly quote unquote, uh, you know, hands off, you know, let them decide when they want to do it because they notice that it's happening in the world. And once they're aware of it, they choose to do it on their own. And so we're not forcing it. We're not fighting them and forcing it. And so we're really choosing um, to focus on things that they really want to do and really provide the space and the freedom for them to do that. And we are not doing it out of fear. Like we're not worried about them having some big gap because we just know that if you are curious about something, you go and learn it. And so that's what we want to do is foster that in them but we have to foster it in ourselves first. Um, and I really feel like taking that first step in coaching and investing in coaching and taking that time to um, learn this thing for myself that I was so passionate about really gave at least me the freedom and the confidence to be able to allow my children to take that next step for themselves as well. So that's been um, a fruit for me. Um, and I think a fruit for our kids as well. And I think for our marriage, yeah. on top of all of that, it's been beautiful. <laughs> so, um, okay, so to wrap up, I have two questions. What is there? What would you want to say to me back before I started managing my mind? Before, like back when things were really hard, um, we had lots of little babies, we weren't getting a lot of sleep. And, you know, if you could think back to that time in that part of our marriage, what was one thing you wish that I just could have known at like into my bones. I think I did say it. I'm sure you <laughs> did, but say it again. <laughs> um, you know, I, it's not always going to be like this, right? And and I, I think I, I I love the idea in coaching of like your future self mm-hmm. and being able to like think about like for kind of project yourself into the future and being able to look back and kind of use that as a decision making tool or as a way to kind of get some perspective for right now. Um, because like, absolutely like four kids under the age of five, you know, at the same time is crazy hard and it's going to be hard for anybody. And that's going to be a rough season in people's lives. And it's going to be beautiful too at the same time, but like a lot of work and a lot of hard sleepless nights and things like that, but that isn't forever. Uh, and you can gain strength from that knowledge, like the knowledge that like this is a season and there will be a season when all of these kids aren't so snugly anymore and you sure kind of wish they were again. And, and people, you would tell me that. I remember you telling me that and me saying, no, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> this is super hard. Like this is going to be hard forever. I had no evidence that this was ever going to get any better. And we had more babies and more babies and more babies. It felt like it never was going to end. It was never going to get any sleep. I was never going to be happy. 
and, and I love these children. I loved our life, but man, I was in pain. And I know that you told me that before. And I remember being really mad at you for it <laughs> because I didn't believe you. Um, so yeah, I, you know, continue. I, I just remember that. And, and I know that now, um, looking back at my past self, I, I just have so much love and compassion for her because it was so hard. Like what that what she's going through is so so hard, and um, and really just being able to extend all that love and compassion to myself right now, when I feel like that every once in a while, like oh my gosh, this is a lot. This feels like too much, and I have all those thoughts come back in. Um, I can just have, like recall all that love and compassion that I wish I would have felt for myself back then, or I wish I would have had, you know, a coach or another, you know older mom who had just come out of this season to tell me that um, and to just hear it from her. So I, that's a, a, a big reason why I love coaching other women so much is being able to be that um, confidence for her when she is like, no, this is, this is not a thing. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> you said you had two questions. Yes. So what would you say to, um, to the dads, to the husbands out there? Um, their wife comes to them and says, this is something that I think would really help me. Um, I really wanted to do this coaching. I, I, I've tried other things and I know maybe it hasn't worked in the past or it's only gotten me so far. I know it's a big investment, um, but I, I feel like this is something that is going to change our family for the better. Like, what would you say to him in response to her request? Yeah, so I'm going to make like sweeping generalizations here. Uh, in my experience, men tend to not feel feelings quite in the same way that women do, um, especially kind of learning about these coaching things. Um, for us, I think in general, it's easier for us to see that connection, that your feelings come from your thoughts and, um, and that you get to kind of use, like you get to decide how you're going to show up, you know, and I think a lot of times the men are kind of raised in that way. Right. And, and part of that is like the be tough message. Right. Like something is is hurting right now, but you're going to go out and do it anyway. And that's something that like like men are kind of used to being told, I think, a lot of times. And so I guess my advice to husbands would be like kind of get a little bit into the tools like to see, because I think a lot of husbands are going to find that it makes a lot of logical sense because it does. Um, and it's also a more analytical way of looking at, um, kind of emotional regulation and things like that, which I think a lot of men are going to be drawn to and are going to see the value of, uh, very early on. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I think also it does come back down to trust. Uh, and I think that, you know, trust has to be built over time. But if you can't trust your spouse, like you're in a lot of trouble already, right? And so I think if, if this is something that uh, a wife is coming to her husband with and saying, like, I really think this is going to help me, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a way of showing trust. And, and I think that's going to make you stronger no matter what comes out of it is, you know, especially if like the man can like resist like throwing that back in her face later at some point or something. Um, but like, certainly like a way to kind of say like, we, we've done this together and we've come together in this way, uh, then that's uh, like something to build upon from there too. And so like, as the wife starts the work, I think you've got that to build on. Like we're doing this together. It's kind of like a team effort, um, because we've, we've shown that moment of solidarity together. I really, really like that a lot because I think that's a fear that women have, um, you know, and some, some, every marriage is different, but if you have, um, that, you know, kind of head buddy kind of marriage every once in a while or, or frequently, um, then it can be a worry for, for the wife to, you know, want to try something. And then if it doesn't quote unquote work right away, or if she has bad days along the way and she, you know, you guys thought maybe you would never have another bad day. Um, this was supposed to like fix it all and make you happy forever and ever. Um, you know, then it could be a fear she has that, you know, that might get thrown in her face, that it might get used against her in some way. And that is, you know, something like you said, it comes down to trust. And um, I love that, you know, encouraging the husbands to get into the tools as well, because um, the husbands of the clients that I've worked with who have, you know, watched some of our videos 
and have learned these tools absolutely love it. And they start, you know, trying it themselves and they say, hey, can I, can, will Emily coach me too? Um, and, and things like that. So, you know, being able to see it bond marriages together is so life-giving um, for me as a coach. But I just know that it is so life-changing for marriages. Um, and it can be, it can save and protect the entire family, which is really at the root of why we said yes to doing this work. Um, and we really did choose to do this together. You know, we, we serve as a family. Um, and so, you know, for us, this was a, a yes, it was our, our fiat that we do together. And we are here to support other marriages um, in whatever way God calls us to at this time. So anyway, thank you, honey, for being coming on with me. I appreciate you. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed recording that for you and sharing it here in the YouTube world. We hope that it benefits you and your spouse, and we hope that you are able to start building those conversations for yourself and start working toward that goal of heaven together in a much more fruitful way from here on out. If you would like to learn more about these tools that I keep talking about and the life coaching skills and the model and emotional regulation and setting healthy boundaries and being able to talk about our finances in a really clear and common way with our spouses, and please come join me in the Happy Holy Mama membership. I have the perfect program for you completely set up and tailored to your Catholic homeschool lifestyle. It's so simple to use. Every single step of this program has been thoughtfully tailored to walk you step by step by step through the entire program so that you can learn every single tool and master these skills as you go to help you start building the emotional regulation and intentionality that you really desire to have to create the life that you've always dreamed of. It's going to help you have emotional regulation, manage your mind, and start getting to work, setting healthy boundaries, and managing your time, managing your finances, managing your day so that the most important things get done. And then I'm there to support you every single week in our coaching calls so that you can tailor all of this work specifically to your life and to hear other Catholic moms who are going through the exact same things you are in this exact same time of life. doesn't matter how many kids you've got. It doesn't matter what your problems are. I promise you there is someone else in our group who is experiencing or has recently experienced the same thing you have, and it is so life-giving and affirming for you to come into those calls and hear other people getting coached so that you can hear exactly what it is that you need to be doing and be able to make progress in your own path, even when you're not the one being coached. It's the most magical place in the world. So please come join me in the Happy Holy Mama membership, and you can learn all the details for my program in the link below this video. And while you're down there, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications so that you can get notified every single week when I release new life coaching content geared specifically to your Catholic homeschool lifestyle. I hope you have a fabulous week. I'll see you next time. God bless.